Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Tuesday, August 4th, 2020. I am Andrew Hansen. This is the NBA podcast. And it's exciting because we've got Sugar Shane Caldwell finally back on the show. He ties for first in the Millie Maker on FanDuel on opening night here of the NBA restart. And we don't even get to see him to celebrate here for several days. He's off, he's been off spending his money, I guess. Shane. <laughs> back on congratulations yeah i guess this is our, our delayed celebration i think yeah. what was there i think there was like five hundred fifty thousand people uh lineups in that tournament <laughs> so it was kind of an interesting sweat and uh i took our advice uh you guys had talked about uh on our podcast that day for opening night we talked about uh the utah jazz how we noticed during the scrimmages and just lately that they've kind of picked up the pace a little bit. Right. Uh, so the way I set myself apart there, the way we set ourselves apart is I end up playing four Utah jazz in the lineup there in a small slate. You got to do something unique like that. So I had uh, Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkston, and then I had Royce O'Neal and uh, uh, Rudy Gobert, uh, Gobert. So I had four jazz in the lineup and that kind of set it apart. And those guys all, uh, produced pretty good, uh, you know, in a pretty fast-paced game against New Orleans. So, uh, yeah, so it worked. It worked out great to be able to, uh, uh, yeah, tie for tie for first with like several hundred people. But for what was it like a four four dollar entry to cash? You know, three thousand five hundred forty seven dollars. That was yeah, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. I mean, we'd all been looking forward to opening night in the NBA for a good month. You know. We saw the Millie Maker contest on both sites and, uh, you know, really dug in there on that two game slate. And, uh, it was, you know, it's just a lot of fun that on the, on the first night you went ahead and, and uh, got the top spot. So uh, yeah. terrific. And, and you, you followed the process that Coach has laid out multiple times here, which is to start with the podcast, get your build. And in fact, you listened at lunchtime that day, got your initial build. And then followed the news. You know, we chatted a little bit in Discord about any final pivots. You decided to stick with Reggie Jackson. Uh, and that was the key. Uh, took you right to the top. So, uh, exciting start. You know, NBA is really our thing here at DFS Coach Talk. Um, and, uh, you know, we invite you to jump in with us. Uh, it's a great time to, to become a member here now that NBA is starting up. Uh, we've really been, you know, focused on these scrimmages. Coach watched basically every one of them uh, to to get every get everything set up for the NBA restart. So, you know, we'd love to have you. Uh, if you come in as a member, we give you a full lineup in FanDuel every night in the NBA, and we give you the coach's clipboard for DraftKings with core plays and other other choices, other pivots, and uh, you know, another winning night tonight with our FanDuel lineup in a in a challenging slate, uh, but. Coach was all over Anthony Davis and T.J. Warren. I was all over Michael Porter Jr. And uh, those were the three best plays, really, you know, uh, fantasy points per dollar. So uh, another solid night. And Shane, we get a six-game slate here on Tuesday to get back after get back after it. So let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, our sponsors really quickly because. Uh, mybookie.ag is one of them, and they have such a terrific offer for you that I'm not even going to describe it. I'm just going to invite you to go to our website, dfscoachtalk.com, look at the mybookie.ag offer. Promo code is Coach Talk. It involves a match. It involves a free play. So highly recommend that. And then tvg.com, that's where the world watches and wagers on horse racing. It's a $300 risk-free bet. Uh, you can go to our website and click through for that. So if you're into horse racing, uh, highly recommend it. All right, Shane, uh, game one here of this six-game slate is Brooklyn against Milwaukee. About the only thing we know about it is that it's supposed to tip off at 1.30 Eastern. We we don't know who's going to play in this one. A uh, lot of moving parts here. <clears throat> Let's start with Brooklyn. I guess we do know that Karis LeVert, uh, Jared Allen and Joe Harris are out. And so you're looking at really the core of Brooklyn's team here in the bubble, because with all the stars out, you know, that we've talked about uh, for a long time here, there's almost nobody left in their regular rotation. So 
the 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 really interesting thing is that on DraftKings they priced up all the guys who are going to get significant minutes. Tyler Johnson is six point six. Chioza is five point three. Jamal Crawford, who hasn't played, might play. He's four point seven. Garrett Temple, who's usually in the three K range on DraftKings, he's five point eight. And you've really been looking at the FanDuel pricing to get ready for tomorrow. I guess later today, really. Uh, we are recording this at night. But it's a lot different over there, right? You could actually consider some of these guys with the FanDuel pricing. Yeah, I mean, with people wanting to get up to some of these high place, high price guys on uh, on FanDuel, I can see that these are these Brooklyn guys would be popular because, I mean, they basically have, like, their, you know, their G League team going on there. I mean, they're uh, pretty much, uh, you know, all these guys that you didn't never even heard of. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Tyler Johnson should be the starting point guard, uh, $4,000. You got Chi, uh, Chioza, Chris Chioza, who thought uh, who would have thought he was going to be, a, a, a you know, a, a good play in fantasy. He's $4,000. So those guys are the same price. And then Garrett Temple, I really like, at shooting guard, 3700 on FanDuel. So those guys are going to be super chalky. So you have to differentiate elsewhere and you got to decide which ones you want to play there, but they're going to get a ton of minutes. They're going to be throwing up a lot of shots. And then on the other side, we don't know what's going to happen with Milwaukee. I mean, normally you'd look at maybe playing onto the Kumpo, but I don't think he's even going to get many, many minutes. He might not even play. I mean, uh, you know, so Milwaukee might pull that last minute change where all of a sudden, you know, they did that right before the quarantine where all yeah, of a sudden they sure did. They pulled the okie doke on you. And at yeah. the last second, they're like, oh, sorry, no one's uh, actually no one's playing. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So a lot of these Milwaukee guys you would normally target like Middleton and Antetokounmpo and maybe Brooke Lopez. <laughs> I don't I mean, they might play a half, you know, and, and this could but this certainly be a blowout. Milwaukee's even their bench crew could probably blow these guys out by 20 points. So that's the, that's the issue here with this game is it's just, it's looking like uh, kind of like a blowout and uh, it's looking like, yeah, it's going to be chalk. It's, it's a fast, pretty fast paced matchup. So normally it'd be a good matchup, but I think that the Brooklyn guys are going to be chalk, especially on FanDuel. And that's kind of what we're looking at here. Other than that. Yeah. You can't really do much with Milwaukee. So it's kind of an avoid situ situation. And we have to look at the news tomorrow because this is the first game. Uh, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on the news here. Yeah, we really have to wait and see. MyBookie.ag doesn't even have a line out yet on, on this game. You know, in, in addition to those moving parts on Brooklyn, we've got uh, Bledsoe and Connaughton who are not on the injury report. And so they might be back in the lineup. Meanwhile, Wesley Matthews is out. But if, if Bledsoe and Connaughton are in, you know, the guard rotation is very muddled with DiVincenzo and, and Hill. And then... You know, the 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 studs, Middleton and, and onto the Coupo, you know, they're still their normal high prices. And, you know, as you mentioned, this is sort of like a scrimmage against yeah. this this G League esque uh, squad that, that Brooklyn's going to trot out there. So yeah. I am I am not I'm not going to recommend any Milwaukee Bucks at this point. If the news changes, you know, maybe. But for now, I, I agree. It's a it's a fade on Milwaukee unless we get new news, and on DraftKings for for Brooklyn, it's it's a fade for me, except for possibly Kuroks at forty three hundred. I think he's going to get a lot of the the big minutes. You know, even though he's not a traditional center, you know, he's just one of the only guys they have. I mean, it's him and Lance Thomas, so you know he should be out there, and. The only guy that's a minimum price who may be in the rotation that I'm seeing is Justin Anderson at 3K. Um, you know, that's a real dark horse GPP flyer. But, uh, you know, once we get to the last game on the slate here where we want to spend a lot of our money, we're going to be looking for a guy who's minimum price. So he's, you know, in the he's in consideration. Um, but check back with us tomorrow. And, and that's one of the values of being a member is – what we have is the the Discord chat area. That's where we give out our FanDuel lineup. And if you're in there with us, you know, we're 30 to 45 minutes before every lock. We're in there finalizing the lineup for our members on FanDuel, talking about any pivots. And so we'll be in there with the late news and giving recommendations on if we want to try and get anybody from this game into our lineups. All right, Shane, game two. This one should be 
a little bit more traditional in terms of news. It's Dallas against Sacramento, 2.30 Eastern start. Uh, biggest news I'm seeing at this point is that Seth Curry is doubtful. So that could open up some opportunities for Dr Trey Burke. Had a monster game here it, after the restart. He's 3.6 on uh, DraftKings. But, you know, this is a game where it's a decent total. It's the second highest total of the published lines on, on mybookie.ag. It's a 235 over under right now. Dallas is favored by six. Um, so what are your thoughts on, on this game? Yeah, I mean, this is a, it's not a really fast paced game uh, here. And, uh, you know, so, but, and it, it is one of the higher over under so because there's some other really slow paced defensive battles here. Uh, I mean, the issue I have with this game is obviously on the Sacramento side, it's really hard to find uh, much upside and value there. It's hard to trust those guys. I mean, they're, they're sometimes will roll out 12 or 13 guys and Sacramento is pretty much out of it. They're just kind of creating this as like, they're kind of treating this period as like an evaluation period for like the bottom of the roster. So it's a little hard to trust those guys in terms of minutes and, you know, what they're really playing for. Um, so I think it's kind of like, you know, blowout potential here for Dallas as well. So, so that's why I'm not in love with this game. I mean, Luka Doncic is still going to get a lot of ownership because he's just been on fire since the restart and he's in a good matchup. Uh, and I think he's uh, he's shooting guard on uh, point guard, or I'm sorry, he's shooting guard on FanDuel now, and he's eleven thousand dollars. So he's pretty much the same price as Harden. So it's kind of hard to pay up for him when we got some other spots that are really fast paced games that should be close, you know, high scoring games here. Um, of course, a lot of people will still do that. I kind of like Porzingis here on FanDuel. He's ninety seven hundred, and obviously Porzingis has been really good. And I think he could exploit the big men in Sacramento. They're not really that good against centers, which Porzingis is pretty much a power forward slash center. Uh, so I do like Porzingis uh, at 9,700, a little bit better than Doncic at uh, 11,000 here. Uh, yeah, I think the Seth Curry news makes it interesting. If you want to take a look at Trey Burke, like you said, at 3,700 over here on uh, FanDuel, uh, you know, and I think, uh, you know, also, uh, DeLon, uh, DeLon Wright, you know, we could look at him and see, yep. you know, how many minutes he might get. Um, that could be an interesting play as well. He's pretty he's pretty talented and, and might, you know, he could get some garbage time minutes. You know, he got 25 minutes last time out, 20 fantasy points on uh, FanDuel. So he's an interesting lower ownership guy at 3,800. Um, and I think that's about what I'm looking at for this game. Do you got any, uh, what do you got going on for this game? Yeah, a pretty similar approach. I like the Sacramento options a, a little. There's a couple I like here. Uh, De'Aaron Fox is a nice price on DraftKings. He's 7.3. He's been really aggressive and successful here in the restart. He had 43 fantasy points against Dallas in the regular season. Uh, so there's a guy I would look at to get a little bit different. And Bielitsa. Okay, if you really want a GPP play, his price went down to 4.5 on DraftKings. And he had 37 fantasy points against Dallas in the regular season. This is a, a boomer bust guy. You know, sometimes he kind of just drifts around, doesn't get shots. Um, you mentioned, you know, the deep rotation with Sacramento. So he, he's hard to trust. But if he starts hitting from deep, you know, he'll mix in some rebounds and he can really pay off that value at 4.5. So somebody to consider. And on the Dallas side, I agree. You know, Porzingis has been excellent, 30 over 30 real points in both games here in the restart. Uh, he's a little bit pricey at 9K on DraftKings. Luca, I mean, you can't really go wrong with him here, I don't think. Uh, he had 59 fantasy points against Sacramento. Um, it's just going to be, you know, how many lineups are you building? And if you're only building one, are you going to stack Houston and Portland? And if you are with multiple studs, you probably can't afford Luca. So, I, I mean, I certainly like him. Uh, but in my primary build, I probably will not use him on DraftKings. I'm going to stack Houston and Portland a little bit and look for some value plays elsewhere. Trey Burke, certainly in the conversation for me. And THJ, also in the conversation this is one of those turnaround plays. He went one for 12 in the last game, 0 for 8 from 3. But 6.1K uh, with Curry out, he should get some shots up. 
so I may get some exposure to him as well. Yeah. All right, game three here. Phoenix against the Clippers. On mybookie.ag, the Clippers are favored by nine. Over-under is 230. That's the third highest of the published lines so far. And uh, more news here. Surprise, surprise. We've got news with every game, basically, in, in the bubble. Uh, Montrez Harrell is still out. Lou Williams is scheduled to complete his 10-day quarantine on the afternoon here, in the afternoon here on August 4th, Tuesday. So there is a chance he will play. Uh, we don't have any announcement at this point, so we, we have to stay tuned for that because he is a, a, a game changer with usage when he's out there. And he's only 5K on DraftKings. So uh, that will really muddy the waters if he's back in there in terms of Reggie Jackson. You know, he's he's been playing well, still a solid price, 4.9. Uh, Beverly, of course, will get impacted a little bit. Uh, so that's the big news there. On the other side, Kelly Oubre is still out. Uh, so one of the guys that's really stepped up is Cam Johnson. Uh, so let's start there, Shane. Any interest in Cam Cam Johnson, who's really stepped up here? Yeah, on FanDuel, uh, small forward is a little bit light, you know, because uh, a lot of people probably aren't going to be playing onto the Kumpo. So He's 4,500, a small forward eligible on FanDuel. So that's a guy that you can take a look at. I'm having a little bit of a hard time trusting him against the Clippers because if he's lining, if he's going to match up even part of the game against either Kawhi or Paul George, that's obviously kind of a uh, no-fly zone there. So I'm a little bit nervous about a young, inexperienced guy going up against these physical, you know, elite defenders if, if it's a competitive game here. So I know that you were pretty high on him because the guy, he is really hot and he's looking really good. You know, like you said, he's got a great shot. He's going to get the minutes. But I'm a little nervous about him at uh, 4,500 on uh, FanDuel. Um, I do like attacking – the Clippers are obviously a great defense here. I do like attacking them down low when they have Montrez Harrell out. I think they're pretty weak down low. I'm not really worried about Zubox. Uh, so I do like DeAndre Ayton. Uh, he's 7,400 on uh, FanDuel here, so got to like him at center. I'm sure he'll be one of the top plays at center here. Um, and Ricky Rubio is a great value. He's only $6,000. He, he's very consistent. Obviously, he gets a lot of assists. I think he will score quite a bit as well. Uh, and, yeah, he's a, he's a great play here. Um, and I think that uh, if hopefully Reggie Jackson gets in there uh, for the Clippers so he can match up against Reggie Jackson, you know, who's not as good on defense because, yeah, obviously Patrick Beverly. Luckily, Patrick Beverly's on a met minutes restriction, which makes me like Ruby a little more because if Patrick Beverly was playing like 28 to 30 minutes, then I'd be a little concerned with his uh, defense on the perimeter there. So you got to like Rubio. He's been really hot and it wouldn't take him that much to get value. He's hit value just about every game so far. And then I, li I like Kawhi and, and, and Paul George, their prices on uh, FanDuel, for example, Kawhi's only 8,600 and Paul George has played great. He's 7,600. Uh, so if, if, if Phoenix can stay in this game, it makes it an interesting game. Uh, the Clippers right now are currently favored by like nine points. So, but Phoenix has been hot. They're they're two and zero. Oh. So if they can stay in this game, I do like this game. Um, it's faster pace, and I do like it to actually uh, probably go over on the total here and actually be a high scoring game. So it is something that you got to look you get your exposure in because as we get into these next few games, you're going to see that it's slow paced defensive grind out battles. Uh, so that's why I kind of like this game because of the, the stars in here and the value you can get. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy these points while you can, right, before we get yeah. to the next two games. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, I'm with you here with, with Phoenix. Those are the three guys I'm looking at. Cam Johnson, Rubio is 6.7, so a little bit more expensive on DraftKings. But I, I still like him um, better than Booker in terms of price. And then Aiden is 7.5 on DraftKings. He had 46 fantasy points against the Clippers. So uh, I, I agree. You know, he's uh, he's going to be popular, but for good reason in this matchup. And it's going to be a tough decision between him and Nurkic uh, on, on both sites. But you do get savings with Aiton. And uh, he's just he's just challenging to trust. You know, only one out of two here. Uh, one really good game, one dud so far. Um so hopefully he'll turn it around because uh, I, I will have some exposure to him. And then again, on the Clipper side, 
if Lou Williams plays, I don't think I'm going to play anybody for the Clippers except maybe Kawhi Leonard. Um, you know, but he's both Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are more expensive on DraftKings than the prices you just mentioned on FanDuel. And Kawhi Leonard does have a good history this year against the Suns. He's averaging 50 fantasy points on DraftKings, but one of those was without Paul George. And one of those was with Paul George when he was coming back from injury and he wasn't playing full minutes. So uh, I don't think that's a true number. So, I, you know, for the most part, I think I am just going to end up fading the Clippers and get a little exposure to the Suns, even though it's a, it's a much tougher defensive matchup um, just because of the price and, and all things considered. So let's go to the second half of the slate, Shane. Game number four, as we get to the six o'clock evening hour it's orlando against indiana uh orlando on the front end of a back-to-back indiana on the back end of a back-to-back they just beat the wizards today 111 to 100 tj warren went off again and uh let's let's start with the injury news here in this one uh because of the moving parts we don't have a line yet on mybookie.ag but uh oladipo sat out today Uh, or Monday night, I guess we'll call it. And uh, we don't know yet if he's going to play Tuesday. I'm going to, I'm going to anticipate that he will play. And Brogdon, who was back in the lineup on Monday night, uh, let's assume that he's going to play. So we may have Brogdon and Oladipo and Aaron holiday playing. They're all in the 5k range on DraftKings. Um, Brogdon played really well against Orlando uh, in the regular season, and he had 41 fantasy points today coming back from injury. So, uh, like I said, he's only 5.4 on DraftKings. I really like him, uh, even though Orlando's top 10 in defense. Uh, he's my favorite play on Indiana today. What, what do you think about the Pacers? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm not going to get a lot of exposure to this game, again, just because I'm, I'm not really liking the pace. I'm not really liking the the, the defense. For, uh, defense efficiency is pretty good on both sides. So um, so there's a couple, you know, spots. Yeah, you could definitely take a look at Brogdon, but you wonder, is his use is going to go down with uh, if if uh, if you get Oladipo back in there? Uh, it, and he's on a back-to-back. He was coming back from an injury. Uh, and then you wonder, is it worth uh, fading T.J. Warren today? Because he's obviously coming off two absolutely just monster games. But now he's coming off a back-to-back, and he's going against Orlando. He's going to slow it down and play, you know, play some tough defense on him. They're obviously going to be targeting him on defense uh, to try to make someone else beat him. So so I think it might be a spot. I mean, T.J. Warren is still cheap, though, on FanDuel. He's still only 6400 They didn't really raise his price that much. Actually, his price went down from yesterday, which is weird because he, he put up 74 fantasy points or whatever. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so that's a that's a, uh, kind of odd. But uh, so 6,400 T.J. Warren is going to be really chalky, but I think that's a way you could gain an edge and hope that T.J. Warren has a subpar game here. Um, you could fade him, but again, there's not that many good plays at small forward, so that's where it's going to be tough to fade him there. Um, so that's going to be one of the key decisions as we get close to lock here uh, on uh uh, on Tuesday to see if you want to fade TJ Warren. Um, and then uh, I think I like uh, if you want to be really contrarian, you could look at some of the Orlando guys like Aaron Gordon. And if you, you know, if you expect him to get more minutes, maybe he gets up in the high twenties to 30 minutes, he could play good or Vucevic with even limited minutes can usually go off. And uh, Indiana's pretty weak down low right now uh, for Aaron Gordon or Vucevic because they don't have Sabonis. Uh, you know, and Miles Turner's okay, but I don't think they're that really intimidating down there. So, so I do like a few of those Orlando guys, but that would be more like if you're a large pool GPP and you're trying to differentiate yourself a little bit there and hope that those guys actually get minutes. But for the most part, Orlando just uses this as again, that developmental team and, you know, they play tough defense, but they're just going to roll out like, you know, 12 or 13 guys at you and just kind of like everyone gets 20 minutes kind of deal. So that's why you just, I don't really, you know, love this game in Indiana. I feel like it's kind of the same way. I don't I don't know if any of the guys are going to have that big upside, even T.J. Warren, who's had the ultimate upside lately. So that's going to be interesting to see uh, what the ownership is. And uh, so are you brave enough to uh, to fade T.J. Warren then as well here? I am. Yeah, especially on DraftKings because they they did price him up over there to, to eight thousand. 
And uh, it's amazing. You know, he's averaged over 70 fantasy points the last two games. And it's so crazy that the FanDuel priced him down. But, yeah, he's priced up on DraftKings, and he, he has not played well against Orlando this season. So I'm definitely going to fade him. And on the Orlando side, you know, I'm with you with the minutes. That's the big challenge here. Uh, I should mention that Jonathan Isaac is out with the ACL tear, so sad news there. Um, so, you know, more minutes to go around. Um, but, um, yeah, so Vucevic, th- that's the guy I would look at first. You know, he was he was great against Indiana. As you said, Sabonis is out. But uh, the big question is, how many minutes is he going to get? He's been very efficient here in the restart. So I do like him uh, if you're playing multiple lineups. And then Evan Fournier, uh, he's, you know, hit or miss, but he, he's he been solid against Indiana here, uh, decent price. So multiple lineups, I would I would play him once or twice. Yeah, and Aaron, Gordon, Aaron Gordon's only 5,600 on FanDuel, so at power forward. So that's why you have to take a look at that. So I guess the question is, you know, you're saying T.J. Warren definitely priced up too much, so he's a good fade. But on FanDuel, being that you know, there's not that many good plays at small forward, is he a must-play on FanDuel then at 6,400? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I think it would it would come down to to to, to the roster construction. Um, you know how much how much salary you have, what 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 options you're looking at there based on which guys you're getting from Houston and Portland. Yep. Yeah, I agree. It's it's going to be a tough fade, but it is he is a good guy that. Is is obviously coming off monster uh, monster games with the recency bias here. Um, you could gain an edge by fading him if he ends up with a dud or just you know ends up with like you know twenty fantasy points or something like that. I could see him doing that, even though he just came off those two you know monster games. So right, uh, yep. So that'll be the a big a big pivot point here in this in this slate is what does T.J. Warren do and what his ownership is. You know, so. absolutely, absolutely. All right, game five here. Another low total. It's Boston against Miami. Boston on the front end of a back-to-back. Miami on the back end of a back-to-back. They played Monday afternoon. Lost a close one to Toronto. And on mybookie.ag, Boston's favored by 3.5, over under 223.5. I am uh, pretty much going to fade this game, Shane. Uh, how about you? Any interest here? Well, I'm, I'm kind of glad you said that because I was kind of thinking the same thing. And I was thinking, man, these I mean, these are two awesome, really good teams, two of the best right. teams in the East. And, I mean, they have a ton of superstars. And I figured this game's on TNT. It's the first game in TNT tomorrow, uh, this tonight. Uh, so I was like, you know, you can see it getting some ownership. It's got a lot of good superstars. But, yeah, I'm not going to expose myself a whole lot. I mean, you could play a one-off if, if you want to try to – Take a shot at uh, Jimmy Butler or, you know, um, if you, Jason Tatum, you know, looked good last game. But it's just these teams are really good on defense. They're, they're, they just play each other really tough and they're not going to play. They're going to play at a, a really uh, slow pace. Um, you know, I guess the, the good news is, is that, you know, you do have the potential of it being a close game. So they play all the way into the fourth quarter. And some of their stars do get more minutes and potent- and there's a potential for overtime. So that's the good news here. Um, but, yeah, I mean, their stars are going to be very expensive. Uh, and, uh, like, Adebayo hasn't been really good. He's $8,000. Uh, Tatum is over $8,000. So he's pretty expensive there. Uh, I don't think Kemba Walker is pretty hard to trust, you know, because he's, uh, you know, he's cheap. But I don't think he's going to get enough minutes there. Uh, and then – there will be some exposure to small forward to Jalen Brown and, and Gordon Hayward. They're around the six thousand dollar range on FanDuel. But again, do you really want to play them against uh, against Miami in a slow paced matchup uh, where they limit their upside there? Uh, so yeah, for the most part, I'm fading it. They might get a little exposure, but not a game that I'm going to f- uh, focus on big time just because they're it's a tough uh, physical defensive type game here. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I just don't think I can do it. Uh, Boston fourth on defense, Miami 12th on defense for the year, but 27th in pace and, uh, you know, back to back. So they're going to be tired after a tough battle with Toronto on the Boston side. If I was going to play somebody Hayward, uh, I would probably turn there or, or Tice. He's only 4.9 on, uh, DraftKings. He should get solid minutes and be out there and, Mixing up the mixing it up with Bam out of bio, so uh, you could go there. 
All right, we've got uh, the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, the last game, uh, Houston and Portland. MyBookie.ag has it as Houston's a five-point favorite over-under of 244. We've got uh, two top five teams in terms of offensive efficiency, two top 12 teams in terms of pace. So is this a, a giddy-up situation, Shane? Yeah, I mean, these teams aren't really playing a lot of defense, which is good. And, yeah, I mean, they obviously have superstars, fast pace, and they have a pretty tight rotation, which I like, which is complete opposite of some of these other teams. Um, and they have something to play for. So these teams are still competing, which you can't say that about all these teams, right? So, uh, so yeah, I mean, this is going to be the super chalky game. It's a 9 o'clock uh, TNT game, uh, you know, primetime game. It's going to be a very entertaining game. So, the challenge is how do you differentiate yourself? These guys are going to be – everyone's going to stack and load up on this on this, uh, on this this game. So it's going to really come down to this game for this late. You know, can you differentiate yourself with a couple good plays from earlier and hit those lower own guys uh, and, and from some of these earlier games? And then your how is your Houston and uh, Portland stack going to do? So, I mean, we're looking at just about everyone's in play here. I mean, obviously – Russell Westbrook, I think, is going to be super chalky. Uh, he's 9,600 uh, on FanDuel, and he's historically done really good against Portland. Portland's not good against point guards, and Westbrook, since the restart, has been really hot. Obviously, you know, everyone knows Westbrook can do a little bit of everything, so he's good. And obviously, Damian Lillard is going to really have to be putting up a lot of shots just to keep up with the pace with the Rockets, so he's really good at 9,300 at point guard. Um, I still like you know, McCollum as well. He's 7,300, a shooting guard on uh, FanDuel. I, I do like McCollum here as well, just because he's going to play a ton of minutes. He can get defensive stats. He can get assists. He can hit threes. He can do everything. Uh, and I even like, uh, you know, Carmelo Anthony is small forward eligible. He's 4,800. I think he's. I think he can have a good game and playing that small ball. He might get down there in the paint, get some rebounds. You know, he's basically going to be playing power forward or center some of the time here as well. Uh, and then, of course, we love uh, love uh, Robert Covington is uh, really good. He does a little bit of everything, and you like his defensive stats. He gets it power forward. He's 6,800. And then uh, if you want a low price center on FanDuel, you got P.J. Tucker. Uh, he plays quite a bit. Pretty tough matchup here against Nurkic, but, uh, he, you know, he could hit some threes in the perimeter. He can get some defensive stats and get some rebounds there. So he's only $4,000 on FanDuel. Uh, I'm – a little nervous about Nurkic here just because I feel like it's just going to be this fast paced game. And does he play a little bit more of a limited role because they're playing the small ball? Um, if, if the big man approach doesn't work and Houston's just, you know, moving too quick for him, that type of thing. So I don't like Nurkic as much, even though I really like Nurkic, like playing him on FanDuel because I mean, he can get a lot of blocks. He's got a lot of upside. Um, but I, I think I'd probably still like DeAndre Ayton more. So I don't, I don't know that I'm going to have a lot of exposure to Nurkic, even though he's been really good. Um, so what what are you thinking here? Just just play all these guys or what? <laughs> play as many of them as you can. You yeah, can't yeah. you can't go wrong. No. Yeah. Um, on on the Houston side, I'm I'm gonna t you know lean towards Westbrook here over Harden. Much cheaper has been much better against Portland. So uh, that's that's pretty much a no brainer for me. Hopefully it works out as as planned as scheduled. Um, Covington on DraftKings is finally priced up to 7.1. He's been in the low 6K range for so long. We've played him a ton, had great su success with him. And I'd love to play him in this matchup, but he's finally at a price where I really have to think about it. And I, I think for the most part, I'm going to fade him. And, uh, you know, at, at least on DraftKings. And look for you know, a value play here or there with Houston. You got to consider House, he's 4.8. In these two games, he's averaging five for ten on three pointers, so he's he's jacking it up. I mean, he's taking D'Antoni's instructions of catch and shoot whenever you're open, and he takes it to heart, and he gets after it. Ben McLemore, you get, you know, fewer minutes and fewer shots than House, but he's only three point one, so he may come into play as a way to get exposure to this game uh, for a much cheaper price. And on the Portland side. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going with Lillard. Um, you know, both Lillard and CJ are more expensive on DraftKings than FanDuel. Uh, with CJ at 8.2 on DraftKings, 
it's a little bit much for me. I'd rather just spend up for Lillard. You know, in these two games, he's played 45 and 44 minutes. He's averaging about 55 fantasy points. Uh, he's just he's on a mission. So uh, I like him. Nurkic, you know, the the price makes it challenging. Along with what you mentioned, you know, we can't really know for sure how Portland is going to treat this small ball matchup because Nur- Nurkic hasn't faced it yet. Uh, but he's been so great in these two games. And centers against Houston have been so great in these two games. Porzingis crushed him. Brooke Lopez crushed him, who we were all over. You know, it's just the the pace is so fast. They shoot so many three-pointers that the defensive center just gets so many opportunities for defensive rebounds, you know, among other things. Uh, Not to mention, you know, any of these guys who can go into the post against Covington. I mean, Covington plays so many minutes that he's got to be careful and he doesn't want to get into foul trouble. So if they get the ball into the post to Nurkic, he should really have his way offensively as well. So I, I do like Nurkic. Uh, we got Melo as the, the revenge game. You mentioned him, revenge factor. Uh, he's more expensive, though, on DraftKings. Gary Trent Jr. is 4.3. And then the other uh, real cheap guy in this game, if you want to get some exposure, would be Mario Hazonia at 3.0. You know, he's a, he's a little bit risky. His minutes are a little bit inconsistent. But I do think he his profile is is pretty strong for this matchup. I, I think he'll get significant run off the bench. So you could go there. All right, Shane. My big takeaway from this slate is that more than in any recent slate – uh, for the NBA, I think the pricing is significantly different on DraftKings and FanDuel for a lot of these players. So, you know, for once, you really have to think about playing different guys on different sites. I mean, I think the price gaps are that significant. And so for me, that's one more reason why it's a great day to become a member at DFS Coach Talk. Uh, go to the website, DFSCoachTalk.com. Sign up for the weekly, monthly or annual membership that will get you into our Discord, and we'll give you the final breakdown on both sites. We'll give you the FanDuel lineup that we uh, finish off once we get all the news at about 1 o'clock Eastern time. And we'll give you the coach's clipboard on DraftKings with our core plays and then a bunch of guys to consider in, in the pool. So uh, that's my overall take on the slate. Shane, how about you? Yeah, it's a, it's it's an interesting slate. You really have to hit on a couple guys early, and then you got to have the right core for the Houston Portland game. That's what's going to come down to. If you have a lead going into the nine o'clock game and you're feeling confident, you might want to uh, pump the brakes a little bit there because <laughs> that's how this is going to be. You know, I mean, if unless you're just playing multiple lineups and you want to try to fade that game, uh, you know, if something happens there. But no, it's going to be major exposure to that game. And I can see that there's going to be some really high ownerships on FanDuel because it's so, such cheap values here. Uh, it's very interesting, though, that, uh, you know, guys like uh, Ante DeCumpo and James Harden, who are normally fantasy studs, aren't going to probably get much ownership here. Uh, they're not in the best spot. But I'm, I'm wondering, though, if Harden is a good, uh, a good pivot play, if he's going to get lower ownership, because historically everyone knows that historically – Harden hasn't done that well against Portland and, you know, so there's kind of this thing and people are playing Westbrook instead, but so Harden is actually kind of a contrarian play. So there's just a lot of interesting dynamics here, uh, you know, and do you pay up for Luka Doncic? That's going to be a big factor as well at 11,000 over here on, on FanDuel. So a lot of interesting things going here. And then you got the crazy uh, Milwaukee Brooklyn game is Milwaukee even going to play their players you know, who are these guys for Brooklyn? Are you going to are you going to play a couple of those cheap guys that are, you know, G League guys? So so it makes for an interesting slate. And uh, yeah, we're going to be locked in right up until uh, right up until lock time here, coming up with some uh, some good lineups and some uh, some good uh, good pivot plays here. Absolutely. So speaking of the news and getting ready for lock, uh, you can follow us on social media and we can we'd be happy to interact with you as we make our final decisions and follow that news. So you can find Shane on Twitter at D E T sports Shane. He is the man of Detroit D E T sports Shane. And you can find me on Twitter at language Olympic. You can find the team at DFS coach talk and our fearless leader, Joe Sarvati. He is at 
J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I, affectionately known as Coach. And then our KBO and golf master, Freddie Mills, is at Freddie Mills 7 on Twitter. Freddie is F-R-E-D-D-I-E. So we invite you to uh, follow us on social media. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors again, mybookie.ag. Wonderful offer on our website. Use that promo code coachtalktvg.com. Same thing. Go to our website and uh, pick up that $300 risk-free bet. And our charity of choice here at DFS Coach Talk is Mamba on 3, M A M. M-A-M-B-A-O-N-T-H-R-E-E.org. And we are in the middle of seven-day-a-week coverage of the NBA. So we invite you to continue to tune in. If you're, uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, and if you're not, please do go there so you can watch the videos. Uh, click on the thumbs up and the subscribe button so you get a notification every time one of these posts. We are recording here in the middle of the night, basically so that we can get it out uh, so folks on the West Coast can listen to it before bed. Everybody else can listen to it you know, at breakfast, on the way to work, or potentially at lunchtime. You still have time here before these early afternoon locks. So that is the uh, the general breakdown, the information we'd like to share with you. Um, Shane, any final thoughts here? Mr. Uh, FanDuel Millie Maker, tie for yeah. first man. I think that as this as this restart keeps going, we're watching a lot of these games and we're getting more and more information uh, because obviously it was like a it was like a extended off season for him, so it's almost like a brand new season. It's like Mar you know it's like March Madness for NBA. So right. at, at the more and more games we watch, the more we're going to gain even more of an edge here. So I think that we have some big things coming up for us uh, this upcoming week and, and going forward in NBA. So definitely. Join us at DFSCoachTalk.com and get in on the action now because it's it things are about to get really interesting. Yeah, I mean, you said it. Uh, kind of understated there for the man who tied for first in the Millie Maker on opening night yeah. and to say we've got big things coming. I mean, that was a terrific right. start, and we are we're hoping to take it up, you know, to an even higher notch here and, uh, you know, looking for all of our members to have huge success here in the NBA. Coach is a 70% cash game winner. Uh, so uh, get in there and uh, get his cash lineups. Uh, we highly recommend it. So on behalf of Mr. Millie Maker, Sugar Shane Caldwell, I am Andrew Hansen. Thank you so much for tuning in and be sure to tune in again tomorrow for the next episode of DFS Coach Talk as we look to crush it in NBA DFS.